All right, you guys are in for a treat here. We have Inga presenting. So they actually won, or she was part of the team that won AWE last year. Um, so she is the CEO and co-founder of Trivoli. Trivoli was founded with the mission to democratize 3D content creation. With that, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm guys so grateful you actually find time to come so late here at 5 p.m. I'm really uh, glad to see you all. And yes, we've become startup to watch last year. Um, and actually, this is how we started our journey with a new product called Shapes XR. But today I want to focus on, on like sharing some insights on what it is to build content for XR, like whether you are building a VR game or AR app, or you are kind of envisioning uh, your experience, or even for the real world. So, and talk a little bit how this content is different and what are the ways to make it much faster and in much more affordable ways um, to how we are doing that. I mean, you are definitely one of the most experienced audience and it doesn't make sense to dive deeper what spatial content is. And it should be clear that this is a very different type of content that we are rather inside than we are looking at. But for some reason, when we put on variable hardwares, whether those AR glasses or VR headsets, sometimes we start that is it really the spatial content? Why I keep watching on one direction on screens in VR? Why should I wear the headset at all? Because it doesn't feel that magic that I expected it to be. So, and uh, there are some like three basic properties of the spatial content that are very important. I mean, immersive. It's easy to say it should be immersive. So why not every app is truly immersive when you are in VR? So why it's not leveraging the space around you, even coming to your user interface? So why should I read text on flat panels? Why the UI is 2D rather than 3D? So it has to be interactive because I mean, our end users and consumers, they want to interact with the content. And finally, it has to be personalized. I think we are finally getting there with the hardware. You know, we are in VR since 2016, our first app released on Steam uh, in 2016. And uh, the deadline submission for the slides was before Facebook changed to become Meta. So I still have that uh, logo for them. Please apologize about that. But I think we still have a problem with content for, for all these bunch of different hardware devices. So, and I do feel that this problem is very similar to what we had with web um, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I was on my third year of university studies. And you know, to create a website, it was quite a challenge, right? So it was mostly driven by developers rather than by designers or product owners or business owners. And there are even like, luckily these companies are still alive and they're quite successful, uh, but the UX wise and the UI wise, it was not the best practices from like getting the information to keep users attention and making them complete their mission on our website. And it seems like we have exactly the same problem building for VR and AR today because it's it's really developers driven. So with web, it's all solved. So we have tools to ideate, we have tools to design and prototype, we have implementation tools, but today all XR is happening in real time engines. I think we are all implementing for XR, but we're not really creating, ideating, and we are not kind of making it to the next level because most of the XR teams consist of Unity developers today. And we've been talking to XR teams at Fortune 500 companies. We've run 50 interviews and believe me, most of XR teams are kind of developers. That's not really people who come with this passion for XR or they leverage web tools rather than building that spatially. And I think this brings out these problems that we have with content today for XR. I mean, by default, creating 3D in 2D is tough. But creating 3D for immersive app, it's even more complicated because, I mean, you have to feel ergonomics, you have to feel scale and distance. As I said, it's truly development driven and it's very hard to pitch early on before you get this Unity build to pitch your future AR app or VR app. So this is why we think that building it in VR does make sense. And it, it doesn't matter what exact tool you're using, but starting your ideation process in VR is a blast by default because what we are doing today, we are thinking in 3D, right? Our 
our mind flow is in 3D, but then we transfer it in 2D on paper, then we take Unity, for example, and it's again going to 3D, we lose 80% of information and idea by all these kind of transitions from 3D to 2D, and then 3D again on flat screen. So it's, it's accessible because VR is that magic that anyone can create in 3D, and also you can early on pitch to your clients and customers, allow them to test before any single line of code is written. So creating in VR is super accessible. I mean, if you can play Lego with your kids or just on your own, you can build 3D stuff in VR easily and even make interactive prototypes easily and test and pitch those to your clients. I mean, you should create in VR because it's very easy to learn. I mean, you actually learn by doing it and there is lots of magic about it. It's because when you create for VR and AR, it's very important for you to do that at human scale, to understand the ergonomics of your environment, to make sure that not everything is happening just in front of your user. I mean, it, you have to leverage the environment around you. It's very important. And that is, it feels like bone in VR or AR. And it doesn't feel like you just did something in Figma and then you transited in VR and we should enjoy like watching those 2D screens in VR. It's not happening. It does not allow us to kind of have this user retention. And it's much easier to communicate your ideas. I don't say that VR is for everything. It's not for everything. So, but it's really important if the space matters, meaning that your environment matters. It's very important to start like ideation and early design. And I mean, if you don't have Unity expertise, this is the way for you to do that. And it's beyond just building VR and AR, it's also exploring user experience for real well 3D products and building stories behind that. So, and uh, you know, I, I mentioned that we, our first product, Fori, was released on Steam in 2016. That was PC VR with all those challenges of being on PC VR, and then it was not collaborative. And by building Tori, as a product owner, I was missing some tool that I can meet with my team, designers and developers, and we can start ideating spatially. Because when we are doing this ideation in Mira or Figma, we do not come with a VR native product. And I mean, it was so hard. And right now it's totally self-proven. We have developed everything for Shape6R in Shape6R. Every feature, every new kind of uh, functionality. We first do this interactive prototype. We approve it in VR within a matter of hours. And then we open this in Unity and we start building it. So you can draw your shapes uh, at scale. You can uh, grab them from the menu. You can import your own models uh, easily with textures, and you can also change materials and properties of your uh, primitives. And it's again, it's like really playing Clega more or less. This is the example of building a VR drums game when it's important that I'm building it already at the very right scale uh, that I can kind of handle this uh, properly. This is just an example. You can build anything, I mean, um, in here. Uh, and then the stages, it's like, linear interactions or 3D storyboard, because it creates subspace, which is more like immersive slide, to pitch your product in motion and change different states of your product. And then with Unity plugin, it's as easy as that to open your entire space in Unity, and then to kind of add all the properties and logic that you want to do, if you want to have this continuous development, and then your Unity developers, they can join you in VR, understand exactly what they're gonna build, and then open that project in Unity. But given that it's also a communication platform and many leadership and stakeholders, they still don't kind of wear headsets on a regular basis, we also have the web viewer um, that is coming next when we finish with I mean, this Unity plugin, which is again, super accessible. And then in web, you can also kind of open the space and you can still change in between different stages, uh, jumping between different viewpoints. And then uh, this is still much better than just sharing a flat screenshot with your management to get approved and get the project funding. So I did want to make the live demo and stream from my headset here and show you how Kind of within like five minutes even, I can create some significant space and wealth for you. But Wi-Fi is not stable here, so I can't do that. Um, but you can actually uh, play with it. So, I mean, so many people I keep saying like, 
oh, you survived till today. And it's like becoming like ma'am, you know, and like Jonathan, who is also building a VR tool masterpiece. I mean, but we started early on and then when nothing existed from UI perspective. So how should we behave in VR when we create content? How we should delete stuff in VR? Nothing existed. So we've been going through it, but it seems like with the hardware wise right now, we do have, we are so close to this way when we can really effectively work in VR together. And I believe that whenever you are designing a 3D product, UI UX designer, or in particular, if you are XR designer, it does make sense for you to, to really upskill and instead of probably even learning Unity, to be successful in pitching your prototypes in VR and then invite your customers to test it again before you spend any dollar on, on development and implementing because it's not agile anymore. I mean, it's so hard to throw away your lines of code, but it's easy to throw away a bunch of your uh, kind of ideation process in VR because it was, it was fun to build it and you can build it again. Uh, and we believe that, you know, we should move from this uh, kind of pitching XR project using PowerPoint or with flat screen uh, tools or wait for like months to get the Unity build to experience those prototypes all within VR. And like web, like, okay, if the World Wide Web was the previous internet when it started, we finally have tools for the metaverse. We also have to use native tools for the metaverse and try to inherit the tools that, that were created years ago for completely different type of media. Uh, that was a long journey for us and we are releasing on Quest Store tomorrow, 11, 11, 10 a.m. You can find Shapes XR. It's, it's the power of collaboration. So you can start building your stuff and then you can share it with your uh, team members, whether those are your sponsors or your developers or your client, they join you and you co edit in real time. It's not like meet to, to kind of watch things, it's to meet and build stuff together or edit it together and build that prototype. So I really appreciate your attention today and if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer those. And again, thanks for coming so late as late as 5 p.m. All right, give it up. Woo. Thank you. All right, what questions do we have? All right. Ooh, there is a question. I'm a fan. Hi there. Hi. Um, do you have any sort of animation uh, capabilities in your product, or do you plan to? I love this question, and I mean, there is a reason for that question, because Tori, our product, which is on PCVR, it's animation. It's like real time and keyframe animation. So right now here we have this staging system, which is more like stop motion animation. So you go through stages more like stop motion. And then this is what we want to listen from our community. So should we go more in the direction of um, interaction systems, which is like non-linear, trigger-based, non-coding, but you can push buttons and something happen, like this logic, but without scripting, or should we add animation? I mean, the first version of Shapes XR did have animation, when you can choose between twinning types, like linear or stepped animation. So this is, of course, coming. I mean, you should first like explore, start collaborating, building your stuff, and share your feedback with us. And then we can go with animation, with more advanced interaction system, Something that is coming very soon is uh, with the first update after launch um, uh, will be that expert of any 3D model, not just Unity plugin, to any other kind of integration to pipeline is essential for us. So it will be USD uh, for like import that then to Unreal if you use it, so or animation um, and more advanced interaction system. Hi, is there any concern for like Reality Composer, Adobe Aero, or some of the bigger people like Facebook with Spark AR kind of just coming in and just, you know, yeah. replacing? Or, or Facebook creating... Horizon or... Uh, yeah, any say, of them. Yeah, so that's a great question. So we are so glad that some tools exist out there. And I think we stand apart for... Um, so Adobe AR is a mobile AR, right? So it's, it's a very, very different thing. So uh, we are... Um, we are really much more accessible, meaning that you can build your own stuff and we integrate kind of uh, to the pipeline easily. And then um, you, you model it. 
as well, right, in, in shapes. You can kind of build your entire layout and experience that at real scale for VR. And there is no better way to create for VR than in VR and for AR as well. We started to experiment with pass-through and this is insane. Can you imagine you are sitting in your kind of room and you are building your infinite kind of UIs for the future of AR rack, I mean, right, right in the app. So I think we, we really kind of focused on remote product teams when the product owner uh, and designer and developer can collaborate all together and then they can invite their customers to really experience and test that usability wise to really get input early on. So Horizon is more like implementation tool. I would more compare that with Unity than with what we've built. So Shape6R is more like if you compare with web analogy, it's Mirror plus Figma or Figma Jam and Figma uh, plus Zoom. And you will enjoy the spatial sound. You know, we decided not to compromise on using any open library out there that so many apps are using. We've built it from scratch to really handle ahead, to handle like multiple people talking and creating at the same time. It's, it's lots of R&D, but this is so sweet, you know, and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Here we go, so I'm gonna give you this mic. Hi, thank you so much. This was a great presentation. Um, I'm curious, do you have to have your headset on to create or can you use the sticks and you know, do your design in 3D still? So you need to be in, on Quest when you're creating, but when you're sharing that, you can also share this with uh, WebLink so that uh, people can, so probably I can start it playing again, uh, so that people can uh, discover that in web. And honestly, um, we see that many VR creation tool that started with us back in 2016, they started to find the way to be somewhere not in VR, like to move creation to iPad, for example, or to, for, you know, we as a team, we believe that 3D has to happen in VR. And I'm not capable to build as amazing tool running on iPad, for example. I mean, I can't do it as accessible and delightful as it is in VR. And that's why we are so committed to create in VR, but sharing elsewhere. So you can share like anywhere, but creation should happen. It's because then you feel this magic and you can within one hour, you can do so much. I mean, you can build entire product of your future VR app, you know, within a matter of one hour. And uh, on a flat screen, it's, it's so different. And that's why, yeah. So, of course, market-wise, like three years ago, it was probably right to kind of, okay, we are done with VR, let's do that for, for non-VR creation mode. But we are not believers. So we have snapping, so you can snap one object to another. Yeah, so when you start building in Shape6R, we have interactive onboarding. So first of all, you learn how to do everything, right? Design tools are different from meeting tools when you just like teleport all the time. We have different locomotion approach and stuff like that. Um, and then it starts like very simple. So when you start using it, it's simple. But if you want to go deeper, there are many kind of design specific things like uh, advanced gizmos, advanced snapping, uh, and all that stuff. And I mean, we already started to push our first update after the launch because this build was freezed some time ago for being on Quest. But a huge update is already there. So to, to push it um, out soon too, yeah. All right. So we were told we have to, to wrap this up, but um, so overall, you know, I, um, I think there's so much to be said about no-code tools and, and their role and that iteration cycle. Um, you know, I myself, I build a lot of data visualizations and I can't tell you that the end data visualization is like one after thousands of iterations of something, right? And same with the VR app, that there's so many more complicated things you have to think about. And I think as an industry, if we think more iteratively, we're gonna get a lot further than if we try to like paint this ideal future from this idealized state and then <laughs> backtrack. So anyways, wonderful. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you very much everyone for coming and I'm ready to answer your questions. If you have any, I'll be here around. Thank you.